Axios is a promise-based HTTP library that allows developers to make HTTP requests to their own service or third-party sources. These requests are made in several different ways. We have GET request, POST request, PUT request, and DELETE request. In this video, we're going to learn how Axios operates in a React environment. We're going to use live examples to pull out data from third-party sources and present it in our UI. By the end of this project, you should be fully proficient with using Axios, especially in a React environment, to handle HTTP requests and to know how to fully communicate with backend or even your own backend because you can do that with Axios. What we have before us over here is information, is an example of information that we might retrieve from third party sources. So we're going to have a bunch of this information or a bunch of these tweets or posts that you see over here in a sort of like a list fashion. And this data, we're going to be pulling it out from a fake uh, API. But before we continue with our video, I do want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel for more developer based content like this. I post these types of videos to help improve your development journey. If that interests you, then subscribe to my channel. And be sure to like this video if you enjoy it, and it doesn't hurt to drop a comment in the comment section. Let's continue with our video. Let me start first by explaining what we have in front of us. Like I previously said, we have like a simple tweet over here. So we have the avatar, and then we have like the name of the user, and the, uh, the, the uh, what do you call this, user handle. And we have like the date over here, and then we have their tweet or something like that. And then we have an image over here. We're only going to be primarily focused on this part of our application. And this part is just to show you what we're trying to implement. We're just trying to implement multiple posts. But we're going to have uh, data coming up from a different uh, source or different third party library. So we managed to create this project or we managed to create this uh, project with a Vit template. If you're not familiar with Deep, sorry, if you're not familiar with Vit, Vit is a rapid uh, development tool for modern web project. It focuses on speed and performance by improving the developer's experience. To know more about Vite, check out my previous video where I advised beginners to switch from Create React App to Vite. Now, what we have in our project is I've simply created a post component. So this is our post component. Our post component has a post header and it has a post footer. And it has this section over here which maybe I could have just said post body, just so everything becomes a little bit uh, consistent. But that's still fine. We're not too much concerned. We're only concerned with the post header in this aspect of our project. So we're not too concerned with the post footer and the post body. And then in our app.js, this is whereby we put our post. So this is nothing too difficult, actually. Uh, it's just a simple project, and I've just created a post component in it. So once again, be sure to use Vit in order to create this type of template. Vit is much more faster and it's much more easier to use. So we're going to be taking, uh, like I mentioned previously, we're going to be uh, creating a couple of posts and our posts are going to be sort of like in a list type of fashion. And in order to create them in a list type of fashion, there has to be a place where we get our data. Luckily for us, there's this API tool known as JSON placeholder. So JSON placeholder is an API tool which has fake data that can be used for testing and can be used for prototyping. In our case, we're going to be looking for random posts. So as you can see, if you scroll down, there's this part right here called posts. So this is the API link, get link, that we're going to be using in order to access this JSON data that you see over here. So you can see this is like uh, multiple random posts over here. So that is what we're trying to create. We're trying to get this information uh, from JSON placeholder and present it in our application using our postcard that you see over here. Simple enough, right? But in order to retrieve this information, we need to use Axios. And in this part of our tutorial, we're going to be using uh, the get request uh, from Axios. So before we do anything, 
we first need to install Axios into our project. So just simply say npm install Axios like that. And then after you've installed Axios, we're ready to go. Now let's create another component inside of our components and we're going to call it post list. And then after we've created post list, this is where we're going to create multiple of posts. But before we do that, we might want to go back to our post and make sure it receives a couple of props. So we're going to come over here and we're going to just say prop. And then I guess our header is also going to receive prop. But then maybe instead of receiving props, how about we get direct? I'm just going to say we destructure the props actually. And we just say name. And then we say post like that. That should be good. So if we come over here, we're just going to say props. No, we're actually going to just say name is equals to props dot name and then post is equals to props dot post like that should be good so in order to get the post what we're going to do is that we're going to create a use effect but before we do that of course we're going to have to create a use state hook so we're just going to say const it's going to be post, well, actually we're supposed to be doing this in post list, so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to say const post set post equal use state. And then inside of here, this is where we're going to put our post. And then after this, we're going to create a use effect hook, just like that. Didn't import, so we're just going to import it here at the top. And then let me just do a callback function inside of the use effect hook. We don't want it to run multiple times, we just want it to run it only once. And inside of here, we're going to create an Axios get. Let's make sure Axios has been imported at the very top. So we're just going to say Axios.get. So this is how we make a get request. And inside of here, this is where we're going to put the get path. So we're going to go back to JSON placeholder and we're going to figure out, we're going to figure out. We're going to figure out how we get those posts. We just come over here and then we put our URL, our endpoint over there. And then we can just simply make a then, but I don't want to make it then uh, and catch. I just want to uh, posts from placeholder, something like that. And then I'm going to just say await like that. Put my async over here. I think that's fine. And then I'm good because I'm going to make another one, which is going to be uh, names from placeholder. I'm going to tell you why we're doing that. Never mind my spelling or whatever is going on over there. Axios.get. Then I'm going to find the endpoint for the users. I should not say names, I should say users. I should say users from placeholder. All right, that's fine. And then I'm going to get my JSON placeholder endpoint. I'm going to go down. There they are, get my users. I'm just going to come over here and get my users endpoint. There we go. And we're done. What we need to do now is to set our endpoint accordingly. Is to actually, we need to fill up our state, sorry. And over here, we need to create a user state. So we just say users, set to users, and the use state like that. So that should do. And then we just come over here and we just say set post is equals to post from placeholder like that. And then set to users is going to be users from placeholder. And that should do. That should be fine. 
And what we're going to do here is that we're going to create an, a list. But before you do that, I do want to make a function. And that function is going to say get name. And what it's going to do is that it's going to use this idea. Let me just go to JSON placeholder so you can see. So what happens is that in our post, what we get is this user ID. So this user ID sort of links to this, these IDs that you're seeing over here. Uh, so it's like a foreign key that links to this JSON, this data that you see over here. So we need to actually use this user ID to extract the user's name from that uh, part of our JSON file. So in order to do that, I'm going to use a, a file. It's going to get a, sorry, sorry, I'm going to use a function. <laughs> Did I say file? So it's going to get a user ID as an argument. And it's going to use the user ID so to filter. So that's what we want to do. I'm actually going to go const user. Or should we? Maybe we can just say return user users dot filter. And these are host. And where is as post is dot id is equals to user id like that Make sure we do triple equal like that that should be fine wait what did we do all right and then it's just to make sure that we if we get an array we get the first record and then from that record we get the name okay i think that's good Okay, so what we're trying to do here is that we're trying to filter through this user array and we're going to get the user who has the same ID as the user ID that is given. And once we get that, this is going to give us an array. So we're going to just simply get the first record from that array. So I think maybe what we do want to do is to make sure that there is a... Okay, so if this exists, if we do have like... If we find somebody with this type of thing, with this type of user ID, and essentially we should be able to like get their name from there or if we don't then we should just get maybe something like no name let's make sure everything is fine over there All right a bit complicated but i think it's more straight to the point um yeah i think it's just like a little bit more straight to the point we could just take this and just put it in a variable so that it's easier for us to implement. But I think you get the gist of it. If, uh, if it's a bit hard for you to understand, you just let me know in the comment section. All right. And then now what we need to do is that we need to come to our div section over here and we need to do a map. So what we're going to do is we're going to say map. Oh, we're actually going to say post. Post map. And then inside of there, we're going to get our posts again. And then we're going to put in our, and inside of here, I'm going to put my post. I'm going to give it a prop, a name prop. And the name prop is going to be get name. And then inside of there, we're going to put uh, pst dot user ID. And then the for the post part of it, I'm just going to say pst dot. Let's just see what it is. pst dot body. It's actually called body. So we're just going to give it the body of the post like that. Right. And I'm hoping that's going to work. Okay. So there's something that I want to do. I want to go back to our async await statement and I just want to like get rid of these and actually do them as a promise convert them use uh, then and catch like this I think this would be much better to do much much easier and after we're done doing this I want to go back and check in with our post header and as you can see it's gray over here so we actually need to get rid of this and we need to use the here we need to use post and then in here, we need to use the name. And in here, we can also use the name as well. Like that. That should be fine. 
And if we go back to our application, you should be able to see, you can see now that these are our posts. And you can see they, they're quite interchangeable, but I'm guessing the names are a bit the same throughout. Yeah, so, but you can see that this, these are our posts. And here we have a different name. So these are all the posts from uh, that, that JSON placeholder thing. All right, so you've understood how get works. Um, so I don't want to go too much into detail with regard to the um, the avatars and everything else, but everything else is pretty much the same. We're not going to dwell into that because what we're trying to get to, to understand is how to use Axios, and you've learned how to use the um, the get aspect of Axios through post list. So what we're trying to do now is that we're trying to do the delete request. In order to do the delete request, one of these buttons has to be a delete button. So I've already um, changed our our icon over here to match a delete type of button icon. I guess maybe we're going to have to change the tag as well, but then we don't have to. Uh, all we need to do is just to demonstrate the delete aspect of Axios. So in order to do that, of course, I'm going to have to give it the post ID. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to just say post ID. This will be the identifier that we need to know what type of post are we actually deleting. So we're just going to say PST dot ID like this. This is going to give us the post uh, ID and we go back to post. Now we have to prop drill it. Normally I would just use either use context or Redux or anything else, but this is a small project and we're not too much concerned about those type of things. So we come over here and we just say post ID. We say props dot post ID like that. Should be fine. And this is going to go to, oh, actually, this is going to go to the footer. So I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to put it in here. And inside of the footer is where we're going to make our implementation. So first, we need to create a function that actually deletes that. So it's going to say delete post. And then it's just like that. So inside of here, we're going to use Axios. So this is going to be props dot post ID like this. Oh, actually, <laughs> this is going to be post ID like that. We're going to destruct it. So we're just going to say Axios dot delete. So as you can see, this is how delete is handled. This is the path that it's going to take. So it's just going to be this entire path over here. And we're just going to put this is the parameter or the yeah this is the parameter that's going to it's going to take or the query it's going to this is where we're going to indicate the type of um, um, post that we want to delete so we just come over here and we just give it that and then we give it that post ID that we want to delete so I'm just going to do template literals like this and I'm just going to say user ID Sorry, post ID, not user ID. What's wrong with me? Like that. So this is going to be triggered. Actually, we haven't finished this because we have to say, I guess we haven't imported Axios at the top. So we have to say import S Axios from Axios like this. All right, and now we can make our then statement then uh, console maybe we can just like alert post has been deleted right and then catch we just say console.log like that that should be fine axios.delete that should be good. Remember to import Axios correctly at the very top. Um, all right, that should be okay. So now we just need to tie this to an on click so that every time we click on this delete thing, what happens is that something is deleted, right? So I'm going to just say on click. And every time that happens, delete post like this. That should be fine. 
So we've uh, implemented that function. And I wanted to have some sort of way we can see that we're, I'm gonna give it like sort of a pointer. I'm gonna give it a cursor, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to say, cursor. And that's supposed to be pointer. So that each time we hover through that div, we can actually see that we're hovering through uh, something. So now if we go back to our application and we actually hover through, we can see that there's that pointer in there. So if we click delete, it should be able to delete our post and give us this uh, thing feedback over here that our post has been successfully deleted. All right, that's good. And what we can also do is that we can also do a uh, post. We can post inside of our JSON placeholder. That's good. So in order to do this, let's go back again. We need to actually text. We need some text in order to post some things in there. So maybe let's just, let's create an input box over here in our post list. I would uh, definitely recommend creating an input box somewhere else, but it's fine. All right, so this is going to be a text type input box. I'm gonna put a placeholder in there and we're gonna say enter a post. Cool, 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 cool. And after that, we're gonna just have like a simple button. Uh, submit post. That should be good. So I don't know, in order to post, we need to understand sort of like the structure of the post. So we need to give it a user ID and we need to give it a title and a body. All right. So let's check. Um, there's our move it over here a bit. I think I just want to like put it sort of in the middle. All right, maybe give it like some margin. Let me just style it up. Give it a margin of let's say 20. That should be fine. So that it's much more visible. This is good. I want to give this one a margin as well. Margin of five. Okay. Don't want to focus too much on the CSS. That's fine as it is. So now what we should be able to do is we should be able to put a text in here. And once we submit it, it should be submitted to our placeholder, our JSON placeholder, All right? So now we need to create a state for the new post. We can just say post and then set post. Make sure you don't confuse posts and post state. And this is currently empty. What we want to happen is that every time you actually change this, so this is going to be on change. So every time this happens, you actually set post. And this is going to get an e, e dot target dot value like that. And we're going to create a function called on submit, and this is going to utilize uh, that. Um, that axios post function and in here we're going to give it that URL once again I'm going to take this one but this endpoint over here we're going to do that and then once we're done doing this remember, oh no, no no wait we're not done yet remember it needs to take in some data or some parameters so we need to first we need to give it the post Oh no, the, the user ID, sorry. We need to give it, we're gonna give it a user ID of maybe two. And then we're gonna give it a body of post. And then what else do we need to give it? We need to give it, we need to give it a title, of course. Okay, maybe. I'm gonna give it a fake title. I'm gonna say, this is from Coding 101. Like that. And then I'm going to say, then this time around, I just want to console log the whatever is being returned so that you can see it as well. And then I'm going to catch whatever is being returned as an error. 
That should suffice. That's our onSubmit function with the proper... Okay. But I, what I also want to do is, of course, I let the user that the post has been, has been inserted posted successfully. Alert. Post submitted successfully. Now we attach this method to this button over here. I'll just say on click. On submit. There we go. That should be good. I'm seeing that there's a bit of a similarity between set post and set post. This is supposed to be set post. So I'm just going to fix that a bit. This is supposed to be set post. I'm going to fix it here as well. All right, so let's test out our application. Well, I've even opened up our dev window over there. And so I'm just going to say, hello, this is coding 101. It should give me the same post. And let's see if it works. Fingers crossed that it does. Uh, there we go. There it is. I've actually removed that alert statement. Uh, I should probably return it. So that it just gives us that surety that everything has gone smoothly. So I'm just going to say alert. Post has been submitted successfully. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to say hello there and then submit this. I'm expecting to find post has been submitted successfully. Okay, so not only can we get post and delete, we can also put as well. And put allows us to just like edit uh, or update our information that we might have already had. So it's pretty much the same logic. In put, maybe let's create a function over here on update. We can choose to update whatever information that we might have. We just say axios put put in the URL. But this time around, you need to specify which type you are editing. So maybe you need to put an ID over here, and then put the brand new um, information that you want to edit. So I would just like simply take this one right here and then put it in here. That should be fine. Then do the same thing over here. And then instead of submitted, you can just say post has been updated successfully. So this would be the put version of uh, our request. So uh, you can implement it. Uh, you can choose to implement it if you want to. You, maybe you can create like an icon. And then once you click that icon, you're able to actually edit it based on the input tag that we have at the very top. But yeah, this is basically what we have for today. I was just teaching you how Axios uh, can uh, be used inside of a React environment. So you might just want to check this thing out on your own and just use it and just play around with it. And especially play around with um, a JSON placeholder. It's a very great tool that allows you to just like fiddle around with the data. Now I do want to mention that um, JSON placeholder, when you're doing a delete request, it's not as essentially going to delete the data, but it's going to simulate a type uh, sort of like deletion. So it's not actually going to delete the data because of course this is the data that everybody else is using. So it's not going to just like simply delete the data. Even, and even as you post, it's just going to create a simulation of deleting or a simulation of posting with respect to post, but it's not actually going to update anything. It's just going to create that type of simulation. So don't expect to see like rigid results when you're actually playing around with this request. Also, you can just like play around with them or you can just like create your own backend and use your own backend in order to or, or to fiddle around with Axios. So thank you so much for watching. That's it from today's tutorial. Um, make sure that you have subscribed to the channel. Make sure that you've liked this video if you've enjoyed it. Uh, and yeah. Other than that, I will see you next time on Coding 101.